Hi guys. It's another hot day here in Canada. It's really hot and uh, it's really hard to work in this weather but I'm gonna try to do another uh, one or two hours here on the car today because we are on the final stage and I want to finish it, you know. So as you know in the last episode we drove it and we had some issues with the uh, oil pressure gauge line that exploded on me. But anyways, uh, we're gonna order a steel braided uh, line for there. By the time this line comes, we're gonna also do other things like I said in the previous video. We're gonna try to put the car into a condition which is acceptable for the road, which means we're gonna have to put lights, we're gonna have to put windshield, we're gonna have to put uh, uh, the bonnet and uh, the grill and stuff like that, just so it is worth uh, just so it's legal for the road and then um, the idea is with the dealer plate to start driving it a little bit back and forth and start finding additional issues because I know there's going to be a lot of things, things that's going to come up while driving it and of course we're going to leave the interior for the uh, for the end so that's the idea, today I think we're going to start with the, with the tail lights okay? All right. so let's work So if you remember here with the tail lights, we had a dilemma where we should use some of them or uh, what were we going to do. And finally, even though I spent hours here on them, cleaning them and polishing them, we decided that they are not uh, worth putting on a freshly restored car. So all of these are going away now. Oops. We're not gonna break them yet. So like I said, we got new ones. And I got these bulb holders as well. Alright, so I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna install them on the car. I hope they come with screws, even though I have the screws from the old ones. Yeah, they don't come with screws. I have all the screws here. Nice. Okay guys, I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna bring you back when they are assembled. Alright, the left side is done. It's already dirty. On my table here. But, yeah, it looks great. Compare this to this, huh? <laughs> There is little difference. Anyway, so now I'm gonna install the bulbs. And I have new holders even. So this one is ready and I'm gonna install it in the car on the car. I cleaned up the hardware. So now we're gonna install it. And this of course won't fit like that, but it will fit after. Oops, on the gas. Alright, and now to do the wiring, uh, according to our schematic, the red wires are our marking li marker lights. Two earth traps, the black one, these for sure are so they go to the body of the tail light and uh, there was one more somewhere is it only one? Up there. so this little one for the side is marker light so this goes with red okay. red and it goes in place okay the green with red is our um, signal light, left signal is green with red and a green with brown is the reverse light which is in the center here so this is green with brown goes to the reverse green with purple goes to the uh, brake lights so only this ground strap where does it go? can I hook it up here? oh here 
this is where it goes. We need to clean that. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's only missing the license plate lights, but these I forgot to order somehow. They were in my list, and when I was placing the order for some reason I skipped and I didn't order them, but uh, there are a couple of little things that I still have to order, so uh, they're gonna be in the next order. So, yeah, it looks nice. The right side, the wiring is the exact same colors, the only different one is the signal light. If you remember, the left one was green with red, and the right one is green with white. All other colors are the same, and uh, yeah, it's wired, but it's, it's not tested yet because I need to connect the switches in the, on the dash and gauges, so we're gonna test them in a later date. So for now I think I'm really tired and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna be back on the TR again tomorrow. Tomorrow for me, for you, after the ads. Alright guys, so it's been more than a week uh, since I last filmed anything I did on the car and that's not uh, because I didn't work. I did a little bit of work but I didn't film it. But uh, mainly I was taking days and nights, nights off because um, I had to deal with other things and I didn't have the time and to be honest I didn't have the mood to, to work on the car. But now we are back on it and I'm gonna just do a quick walk around to show you what I've done. Uh, it was pretty straightforward so you didn't miss anything. You probably noticed that the front tires are off and that's because there was a brake line leaking over there and I didn't even notice that and you see the uh, brake fluid damaged the paint there. I dried it already and cleaned it with brake clean but uh, now I still have to because the paint now is flaking here so I'm gonna have to remove whatever is flaking and uh, paint again the frame there well this brake line was leaking from here all the way down so when I changed it I also had to, to bleed the front brakes of course so that's one thing that I did and the other thing is I told this today during the day during the work hours uh, that's uh, shroud stainless steel I still have the protective film on it but that's uh, just to protect it until I finish the car but uh, yeah I installed it today it was pretty straightforward I wanted to show you how I installed it but actually I was working during the day and as you know already I guess during the day it's really noisy here and the videos don't come out very good I even got criticized and of course reasonable that uh, my last video about the TR4 alternator was really noisy and almost unwatchable. So that's why I put that without filming, filming it, but um, uh, it's fine, I think it's pretty straightforward, so you didn't miss anything. I'm gonna have to take out some of the parts again, these side pieces, I'm gonna have to take them out, because first of all, they are loose over there at the bottom, and I don't know why, um, there's nothing provided for that in the kit so I think I'm gonna make some stainless brackets I have some stainless steel so I'm gonna make some stainless brackets for here to hold it like that and that's gonna hold it better so that's one reason I have to take them out and second because I still haven't installed the grill as you see and the grill is supposed to, hold, to go there before the shroud but actually I don't want to install the grill yet because I want to have the hood before that or the bonnet because when you put the bonnet on it's very easy from here to reach and uh, tighten the bolts and adjust them and in this way it's very easy to align the, the, the bonnet so I'm gonna do something else when I'm ready I'm gonna take those parts out I'm gonna install the bonnet, I'm gonna adjust it and everything then I'm gonna reach from here and I'm gonna bolt the front or from underneath from there's a hose, there hose, hose here so I'm gonna find a way to um, install the grill and then I'm gonna install this back 
and that's gonna be it. And I don't want to put the hood on yet or the bonnet because I'm uh, still, mm, it's comfortable for me to work like that on the engine bay. Once I finish everything in the engine bay, I mean finish installing things in the engine bay because after that there's gonna be a lot of tuning, but for the tuning it's fine to have the bonnet, but while I still install parts like wiring and stuff and especially here I want to make sure that the lights are working, signal lights, everything. Still need to wire the driving lights so um, I don't want to have the grill and the bonnet on yet. So that's what I've done so far, not much but like I said I had other things to deal with this week. So hopefully from now onward we're gonna go back to normal with this car and we're gonna finish it soon. Um, yeah so today was the plan. Now I'm gonna move on, maybe to um, we'll see some wiring there, uh, the fuse box, some relay. Uh, we'll start hooking things up. So, anyways, let's do some work. That's enough rambling. All right. So for here, we have a brand new fuse box. So okay, and we don't have fuses. <laughs> no fuses at all. But we'll see that. So. This, I guess, is coming here. Alright, so now, let's see the wiring. This is the flasher unit for the signal light. Is this how it goes? I guess so. Okay, and this I know. One side of the fuse box and the other side of the fuse box. You will see according to the diagram. This is for the windshield wiper motor and this I'm guessing is for the horn. Yeah, I just connected the horns down there and they had the purple with the yellow wire. So that's the wire that goes to the horns and the other one, we will see that. I'm not even sure if we have the relay for the horn. Anyways, so let me grab the wiring diagram and my reading glasses. Yes, guys, I'm old. I need reading glasses now to read. Okay, red with green is on the second one. So one empty. Red with green on the second one. Then we have brown on the third one. And white on the fourth one. Perfect. Everything matches so far. So now, where we have the red and green, on the other side we have two red ones, these two are these, on the second one. On the third one we have multiple purple ones, so these, all these purple ones go on the third one. So we have two, um, two bridged uh, connectors here, so one of the purple ones go on one of them. The other purple one goes on the other one. And in the last one we have two green ones, exactly. Well, so everything went well here. So only, we only need the fuses now. And we'll find the old fuse box. So, on this side we have red with green, brown, white. The bottom one is empty. On the other side we have two reds, on the third one we have four uh, purple and on the top one we have two greens. That's how it goes. I actually managed to find also the fuses from the old fuse box and they're all the same so it doesn't really matter how many amps. Okay. Perfect. So now let's see about the horn. I think the horn should work without the ignition, right? Purple with yellow goes to the horns, purple with black goes to the switch. So that's the ground. So uh, this one should be live now. Let's see that. Yes, this one is live. Alright, I found the relay and I cleaned it. And I can barely see the, word, the letters here. So this is W1 and W2. This is these are two bridged ones, they are C1 and this one, the single one is C2. So I'm guessing that W1 and W2 are the winding on the relay. Yeah, the ground from the button on the steering wheel, which is the purple with the black, goes on W1, one side of the winding. 
actually I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave it alone for now because I have another cable here coming directly from the battery which is ground you see green light is ground uh, so what I'm gonna do on W2 I'm gonna put the power which is this one and goes on W2 and to test the relay now if I do this the relay clicks you see so that's good and the other uh, purple one which is permanent power always live goes to C1 and on C2 we put the purple with yellow which goes to the horns at the front so that goes to C2 right here and of course like we said the purple with black goes to this but now I can't test it if I put this one so I'm gonna put temporarily the black one that comes from the battery oh my god <laughs> This is loud! Wow. <laughs> wow, great. Okay, I'm gonna put this one here and we are done. And it looks like it goes here. And then if we have another relay, which I have for the overdrive, it's gonna go under here. One relay underneath and one on top. And actually I'm gonna install that relay now. So I'm just gonna test it. And that's how they go. That's for you, Stevie, Mr. Catworm59. <laughs> you see, I'm always thinking of it too. When I figure out something, I think, okay, now I'm gonna share it with Stevie because I know that he's also gonna be in trouble like I am. So you know what? I'm gonna test this relay with the same wiring. Just make sure that it works and then I'm gonna clean it and install it there. So I'm gonna and here we're gonna do this it works okay so now we can install finally the uh, windshield wiper motor and this goes like that remember how we installed those if you haven't watched that there's a video about that so I'm not gonna go into details here Anyway, so now it is everything looks nicely organized here. The only thing is now we have to run the wiring from the overdrive and hook it up here. All right, so now that uh, it's a new day and uh, we're gonna wire the overdrive today. So uh, I was looking at the wiring diagram to find out how exactly what colors and then it, everything goes here. And I was surprised because, uh, actually let me show you something on the computer. Okay, so surprisingly on the wiring diagram, uh, let me see which one, is, yeah, this is the 73 one. Uh, and this is here the part for the overdrive, I'm gonna make it bigger. So there's a power coming from here, that's from the fuse box here from one of the fuses. Um, power one side goes through the switch on off on the steering column then it goes to the interlock switches on the gearbox and uh, if they are closed if which means if we are on second third or fourth gear then the solenoid is gonna click because it's grounded on the other side very straightforward and simple but no uh, relay there so that's really surprising for me for some reason they don't use a relay and I don't like the idea because the switch is gonna get burnt very fast and, um, and that's why I'm gonna install a relay so um, to install a relay I went and searched for this guy they told me he had videos this guy called Elin Yakov probably Elin right I don't know if it's a girl or a guy <laughs> it's a guy it looks like he's a guy so it's not Elin it's Elin Elin Yakov so I went to his channel and went to his playlists and in his playlists there's this playlist for a type overdrive uh, overhauling and there are about 12 i think yeah there are about 12 videos about overdrive overhauling and in number nine the final test he talks about the uh, wiring switch closes and that energizes so the solenoid and if the side goes to this side of the two Okay, 
Ah, all right, so this is the wiring diagram. I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. So he's talking about uh, taking power from the battery one side, goes through the C1 and C2 terminals on the relay and then to the solenoid directly. But this C1 and C2, they are open until we energize the W1 and W2 um, terminals on the relay. So we have the ignition switch before the relay. So this means when we turn the ignition on, this side of the winding inside of the relay is going to be always energized and then it's going to be looking for ground on the other side and ground is going to come from here through these two switches. So one of the two, if it's closed, these are the two switches on the gearbox. Um, if one of the two is closed, we're going to have a circuit here and if the steering column switch is switched on to, then we're going to have uh, ground on the other side of the coil and this means that C1 and C2 are gonna close and we're gonna have circuit here. So that's very simple but um, he doesn't talk about fuses here, right? So I think I'm gonna do something else now. I'm gonna do this. On the fuse box we have one empty slot for a fuse. So for this fuse we're gonna take power from one of the other three fuses, we're gonna just jump it to here, uh, but we're gonna take power from one which is uh, energized only when the ignition is turned on. So we're gonna jump it to here so we can have a fuse, and then we're gonna go from the fuse to the C1 terminal of the relay. So we know that between C1 and C2 we have a switch, so on the other side of this switch, which is C2, we're gonna connect the solenoid which is grounded on the other side. So as soon as we close the circuit between C1 and C2, the solenoid's gonna click. So how do we close the C1 and C2 circuit? By energizing W1 and W2, right? So W1, we're gonna just jump power from C1 to W1 because C1 has two terminals here. So they're just bridged, but they are actually one. So I can even do this so we know that this is the same thing. So from C1 we're gonna jump power to W1 and then we're gonna look for ground on W2. Ground is gonna come from one of the two switches on the gearbox because they are grounded on one side. So either one, if it's closed, uh, we're gonna have a closed circuit here, either this way or this way. And then only the switch on the column, on the steering column needs to be turned on. When this turns on and one of these two is on, then we're gonna have ground on this side of the winding and on this side we have power through this fuse. So if this is energized, the relay will click and the C1 and C2 are going to close and then we're going to have a circuit here. So that's how we're going to do it. I think that's the simplest way that we can find. Okay, so back here we said we're going to have to jump power from one of these, okay? So I have red light here when I have power and I have green when I have ground. So here on these two slots I have ground because I'm back feeding from uh, lights or from anywhere but I don't have power because these are going to be powered when the ignition turns on. Let me try with this one. Okay, this is probably for the lights, so the lights are not on, still no power here, but here, okay, this one is energized now when the ignition is on. So I turn the ignition off, it's the power turns on, the ignition is on, the power is on here. So we're going to jump from this one. So I'm guessing this is the life part. Yeah, there's ground here now. Turn the ignition on. Power. Ground. Power. Okay. So we're gonna jump from here, from the rear terminal to here. So we're gonna have power also on this slot when we turn the ignition on. Alright, so we're gonna jump like we said from here to here like that we said from the other side of the slot for fuse we're gonna have to go to c1 right so from here from C1 we say we're gonna send we're gonna jump it also to 
W1, which is here, like that. From C2, we have to go down and to the solenoid, and then another one from here. Now we have to send one inside to the switch, then coming again out and going down to the uh, switches. So I made this harness, which is uh, gray and blue wire, and they go all the way to the other end, again, gray and blue wire, with the only exception that the blue is uh, cut here, and it, it goes uh, inside the car. So we, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to connect the gray to C2, the other end is going to go directly to the solenoid and then the blue is going to go to W2 and then it's going to be like a loop, it's going to go to the switch on the, sol on the steering column then it's going to come back through the other side and then it's going to go all the way down to the switches on the um, gearbox. So this goes to W2, so we'll go inside through this grommet which is right under the clutch master cylinder and now this long end is gonna go to the gearbox. Right, so here now for some reason I've done some wiring before but I don't even understand what I've done and Definitely it's not what I want, so I'm just gonna get rid of everything. Alright, so uh, here we have three switches. Yeah, this one is for the reverse, this is for second, and this is for third and fourth at the same time. We have to ground one side of these two switches, right? So I made this little harness here, which is gonna go like that. One side of this switch, one side of this switch. and then right here on this bolt then this here is our harness that comes from from the relay and we said the gray one it's gonna go directly to the solenoid. Okay, the solenoid, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut the bullet off. I wanna use more secure connection than bullet. I'm gonna use spade connectors. So I'm sorry, but this is not gonna be original. All right, so we say the gray one, which comes from C1 on the relay, will go directly to the solenoid, and by chance I match the colors. This is gray with purple, but that was total fluke. So we're gonna join two blue wires together with one spade connector. <coughs> All right, so now this will go to the other side of each switch because one side was grounded, right? And the other side is still available. So. Okay, and that's it. Now it should work. The only thing is now we have to connect the blue uh, wires here that we run inside to the overdrive wiring, which is I don't know where. I did something stupid here. The wires are not long enough, but I'm just gonna hook them up together, which will act as a closed switch then I'm gonna turn the ignition on I'm also gonna put I'm gonna have to move one fuse right I moved one of the fuses to the uh, empty slot there for the overdrive and now if we turn the ignition on fourth the overdrive clicks wow great so neutral turns off so second neutral, third, neutral, fourth, neutral, and of course reverse, nothing, and first, nothing. So it works as it should. 
perfect. And actually, let me turn forward, and now I'm gonna disconnect these wires here. Okay, that's the switch, right? So the switch turns them on and off. Perfect. So this wiring is done. Well, we are making a good progress. I'm happy. Anyways, I think that's gonna be it for today. Actually, let me move to a better location. Okay, so the only thing now that remains to do is to extend those blue wires that I left too short and connect them to the switch here on the steering column and our overdrive wiring is gonna be completed. So, that's gonna be it for this week. Thanks for watching guys and thanks for subscribing and now again we're gonna have to push a little bit and uh, catch up with this project because I skipped a full week because I, I had to deal with something else. So. Thanks for everything guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.